Hola muchachos, que tal? This time we're going to be talking about using verbs in the present tense or what somebody is doing right now. You see these verbs in green on the screen. We've used them before and others like them. But this time we're going to talk about how we change infinitives like hablar, estudiar, cantar, and so on. So we know who it is that's actually doing these things. Remember when we were using these verbs called infinitives, when we were talking about me gusta and te gusta and so on, somebody liking something? Let's look below each sentence and recall what we were really saying. Remember, these things were actually pleasing me or pleasing you or pleasing somebody. But next, let's talk about when somebody is actually doing these activities. So we were using these verbs in what's called the infinitive form. All infinitives mean to do something. Tocar, to play. Hablar, to speak. Nadar, to swim. But as it says here, unlike when we use these verbs with gusta or gustar, we have to change the spelling of these infinitives depending on the subject of the sentence. Or in other words, who's doing these things. Oftentimes we'll use names like Jim plays the guitar or Mary speaking with friends. But sometimes we don't use names at all. Uh, in other words, we use something called subject pronouns. What that means is, what about saying I play, or she speaks, or we swim, and so on. Again, these are called subject pronouns. What? Does all that sound confusing? We're talking about conjugating and infinitives and subject pronouns. Well, let's take it step by step and talk about subject pronouns first. And here's the chart we use to write down our Spanish subject pronouns. It's really convenient to have a chart like this because it helps us organize where to place our conjugated verbs. I think you already know these. And just as a reminder, when you're talking to a friend of yours, you refer to him as tu. When you're talking to me, senor G, you call me usted. If you are over in Madrid, say, and you're talking to a bunch of uses, you call them vosotros when you're talking to them. Um, and if you're in the Western Hemisphere, though, uh, say you're in Chicago or South America, Central America or Mexico, uh, and you're talking to a bunch of used guises, you call them ustedes. Got that? So we've done the subject pronouns, but now we have to talk about changing the spelling of the infinitives. Remember what we called that again? Here it comes. Right, conjugation. So let's learn how we conjugate those infinitives next. We'll go back to our chart form in a minute, but first we need to recognize an infinitive like a studiar to study. And when we conjugate it, we need to remove that infinitive ending, ending in R. And now here it comes. Yo is about to lighten up. There it is. And when we're talking about I study, we add O to the end. Yo is studio. 
if we're talking about you are studying or you do study, you usually study to a studious. How about he studies, al studia, or she is studying, a studia, or you do study, sir, who said a studia. If we're doing it, nosotros estudiamos. If you guys in Madrid are doing it, estudiais. And if they're doing it, ellos estudian. If they're all girls doing it, ellas estudian. Or you guys is. Ustedes estudian. And here we come back to our infinitive estudiar. And let's do one more. Invitar, there's our infinitive. We need to get rid of the infinitive ending. AR. And watch again. See if you can remember what endings we put. Here we go. Yo, it's lighting up. And here comes our infinitive back again. You got that? Let's see if we can put them now in chart form. Okay, here's some verbs in infinitive form that we're familiar with. Watch as they fill in the chart. Okay, here comes cantar. Can you do that one? By the way, see the little angel on the right side? Remember him from before? He's there, remember, because these verbs are following the rules that we've been talking about. Okay, here comes tokar, and we'll take away the subject pronouns. You'll remember them, right? And there you go. And here's some verbs you may not know. Can you do these? Sure, they look the same, right? Does it really matter if you know what these words mean in order to conjugate them? And let's take away the subject pronouns. Does it matter if you know what ganar means? No, not really.
By the way, I noticed the angel doesn't have his halo this time. I think it's blocked out by the dark background. And here comes Darrow Tar. Do you know what that means? Does it matter? And finally, that was easy, right? So let's do some examples. First one, I swim or am swimming in the ocean. Notice the next one, we could put a name with it if we wanted to. We could say two comma Eduardo uh, are singing in the auditorio. Next one, AS studying geography, we could actually put a name with that one. All right, you got that? Let's go on to the next ones. And sometimes we can combine names with subject pronouns. Look at the first one. Maria y yo tocamos las guitarras. We've combined a name with a subject pronoun, yo. Be careful when you see the yo, if it's combined with a name, it's nosotros. Same with Fred, Gertrude, y tú, Estudian. Even though we see two, you have two other names, and that is Ustedes. Got it? All right, let's try this mini quiz. It's up to you now. How'd you do? See you next time.